Hey fellow Garage Golfers, Roland here with Garage Golf, where we provide extraordinary golf info for the extra ordinary golfer. I have a massive, massive surprise for you guys at home, courtesy of our friends at the Indoor Golf Shop. One moment. We got the GC3 in our hands, ready to unbox. This is on loan from the Indoor Golf Shop. This is going to be something where we unbox. We're going to show you every detail of the Foresight GC3, as well as the Bushnell Launch Pro, because believe it or not, it's actually the same device. I'm going to tell you what's different between the two and which one may be right for you at home. Stay tuned and check it out. All right, thanks again for watching here at Garage Golf. If you're new to our channel, what we do here is we provide information on golf products, golf equipment, golf simulators, and pretty much anything golf related. So if you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe, click that bell notification. That's very important. So you get alerted of new videos like the one you're watching here today. And also for all of our products that we have here in our golf simulator, if you have any questions, make sure to reach out to me at Roland at mygaragegolf.com and check out our website at www.mygaragegolf.com. Dot com. We put on there links for all of our vendors, preferred vendors, things like the Indoor Golf Shop, where we have all of our favorite products that we want to share with you. Some of these are affiliate links. If you use those, that's how you can help support the channel at no additional cost to you. Make sure to check out our website. Okay, so I went ahead and take the wrapping off of the box. And again, this is a used device that have been sent to me for testing. I'll have this here in the channel probably for a few weeks. So I look forward to answering any questions that you have. But let me show you what comes inside the box. And again, this is the Foresight model, which is the GC3. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. The starting instruction guide. You know how we do it here at Garage Golf. And here's the unit itself. And why is it called the GC3? Well, pretty simple. It has three cameras that's going to actually capture all the data that we're looking for. I'm gonna go over each specific piece of data that this will actually calculate and measure for you at home here in just a few minutes as well. But as you see, it's a pretty tall device, probably about 15 inches tall or so. And it's gonna go basically horizontal to your parallel to your golf ball on the floor. So we probably set it down here, similar to like what you would see here. There is an actual readout on the screen that'll give you all your data. It has a cool little handle too that you can pick up with your fingers. Now let me see if I can show you the readout here on camera. I might have to turn the light off. Yeah. Okay, so crazy. It doesn't show up on my camera. I'll show you from another view here in just a few minutes, but it's a pretty large readout, about three inches, four inches or so wide. And it tells you on there where to move the ball and you can't see it here on the camera, but I'll show it to you here in a few minutes. So you should have a pretty good range of where you can put your golf ball, and I'll show you that also from a secondary camera that you should be able to see. In addition, in the package comes a USB-C cord that plugs directly into a USB. Now this is gonna go directly into our PC, so you still do need to have a PC. And uh, there is an app for this device as well that you'll be able to use, and I'll show you how to download that here later. And then of course, we need to have this charge. So we're gonna have a charging cable for this device as well. You'll just plug that into a standard outlet. Also comes with an alignment stick to help you align the device. Pretty cool, folds back up. And that's everything that you need right here. Now also, um, it will come with club stickers. I, I did not get that with this package, just so you're aware. So I may not initially have all the club data that it would show, but I'm gonna show you what it's gonna actually calculate and measure as well give you that information. And also we're gonna talk a little bit more here in just a few minutes about what is the difference between the Foresight GC3 that I have here that runs around $74.99 and the Bushnell Launch Pro, which is pretty much the exact same hardware and the difference in the price is $29.99. So a lot of people would ask, well, why not just get the Bushnell Launch Pro if it's the exact same device? Well, technically it is and it isn't. And the big difference is the software. So let's take you to the computer screen. I want to show you what makes it, what basically separates those two devices and which one may be the best fit for you at home. 
All right, so I wanna show you really quick here on the computer what comes with this package, all in all, everything that you're gonna be seeing and everything that you're gonna be looking at and what's gonna separate this from the Bushnell Launch Pro. And that mainly is the software. First and foremost, if you get the Foresight GC3, you're basically getting all the software that's included with it. Now there is a software add-on. The package I have is just the standard package, which so you are aware, it comes with 11 courses. If you wanna add an additional 10 courses, you can do the Player Plus package, that's $1,500 extra, and that will add an additional 10 courses to that package. Other than that, it's pretty much the exact same thing. So let's walk you through what comes with it. Obviously, you see the GC3 here. Here's the three cameras we talked about. It's gonna come with the launch monitor. It's gonna come with the new FSX Play software. And what that is, is a more modernized, better looking graphics version of the FSX software, which was what normally came with the actual package. So they've went ahead and beefed up their graphics, made the courses look nicer, and you're gonna get 11 total courses included with the FSX software, just so you're aware. You're also gonna get access to the FSX Pro Performance software as well, and the Foresight Sports Performance app. So if you needed to make this portable, you could use the app with the device and take that app with you. So we're gonna see if we can download that app as well and show you some more information on that also. You automatically get a one-year warranty with the package, the power the adapter and the cable, the USB-C, which I showed you, the alignment stick. Again, club markers, it did not come with this one because they sent it to me, but I'll see if I can uh, make do. I think I have some that may work here that have been sent to me by a third party, so we'll check that out as well. Now, the 11 courses you get are included right here. La Joya Pines, Blue Bayou, Broken Tree, Linfield, uh, Teton Pines, Willow Crest, The Farms, Beaver Hills, Tall Pines, and Butterfly Country Club as well as Kinsel Golf and Fitness Club. So these are the 11 courses. I'm gonna show you some of those as well so you can take a look at it and see what it looks like with the updated graphics. And then here's all of the data that you're going to get, measurements and tracking. So this is a photometric technology in the GC3, it actually captures and records club and ball data. Portability of this launch monitor makes it easy for you to transition from the range to the course or in your own home setup. The ideal thing about this is you can take this outdoors, you can take it in the sunlight, it's going to read it, it's going to be accurate, which is really, really good. Now for ball data, we're gonna get launch angle, side angle, ball speed, total spin, carry, sp and then side speed, side spin and spin axis. For the club data, which you will need a sticker for, it's gonna, I think, believe it's one sticker that goes in the middle of your club, you're going to get club head speed, smash factor, club path, and angle of attack. You still do get FSX 2020, which was their original package, uh, features exclusive courses, skill training on the range, and competition against players all over the world, all in stunning 4K resolution. So you get that paired with the GC3 as well. And then the new FSX Play software, which builds off 2020, which is ushering a new and indoor golf, in indoor golf experience, utilizing the Unity graphics engine FSX Play, features hyper-realistic gameplay, rich textures, 3D grass and foliage, enhanced lighting, an updated UI and more. This is a package that you can add if you want to for 1500 bucks. It will include the Pebble Beach courses, which is Pebble Beach, Links at Spanish Bay and Spyglass Hill. You get the old course at St. Andrews, Carnoustie, the Real Club Valderrama, you get Pitch and Putt, the Castle course at St. Andrews, the Jubilee course at St. Andrews and the new course at St. Andrews. So every now and then you may also get a bonus course that gets sent to you from FXX which has not been the case in the past, but is starting to happen a little bit more. I think they're trying to be a little bit more competitive with what they're offering. So, so that's something to keep in mind as well. So again, uh, if you have any questions on this, reach out to me, let me know. Uh, also check my link so you can look directly at shopindoorgolf.com. And this is uh, the partner who sent everything to me here to be able to show this to you guys at home. They're a great company. I've sent a lot of people their way and look forward to having them help you with any questions you may have as well. All right, one other thing I wanna discuss with you is the difference between the GC3 and the actual Bushnell Launch Pro, which starts at 3000. And what you don't get in regards to the Bushnell Launch Pro is you don't get any software whatsoever out of the box. You basically just get the device and the display screen itself, which is on the actual device. You get no flight simulation with the ball, you get no golf simulation whatsoever. So when you start adding the cost of those items and you start looking at that, 
It's a very, basically a pay now versus pay later situation. And in the regards to the software and what we're looking at for the Bushnell Launch Pro, I'll, give, I'll go over prices here with you on that in just a minute. So here's a really good article that I found from My Golf Spy that kind of tells you the difference between the two. Again, obviously besides the price, what you get with the GC3 is an out of the box, pay one time, fully functional device. It gives you access to all the ball and head data the device can capture, as well as fully functional FSX simulation and practice software with the course bundle. You also get Foresight's Fairgrounds gaming package and access to online play. Whereas with the actual Launch Pro, all you get is a screen like you see here in the picture. It will show you your ball speed, your carry, your launch angle, your total spin, and if you pushed it right or left. Uh, and it's basically what you see, whatever the device can show on it itself, this is what you're going to be able to get. Um, and that's obviously something that you're not going to see your ball flight, you're not going to be able to actually have everything in regards to golf simulation, play any actual courses. So that's a big difference. Now, if you're someone who just needs data, then this is gonna be a really accurate launch monitor if you look at the Bushnell Launch Pro. Um, and if you're looking for something that maybe you're only gonna have for a couple years, it may be something to consider because as you add the annual subscription, here's the cost to add subscriptions to the Bushnell Launch Pro. One, you have a basic plan, which is $99 per year. And the first year is free with GC3 purchase. So. If you have that, um, it's gonna basically give you access to everything with, with basically both packages. Now, with the Bushnell, you're also gonna need to add the 399 annual silver plan. That gives you all the functionality of the $99 package with the addition of a basic simulation package that allows you to connect it to a computer and project it to a screen. There's no access to online games, but you can play virtual golf. Five courses are included and practice on the range. So, now we're spending 399 a year for that silver plan and that's going to basically give you access to play a few courses. Now, if you want access to everything that comes in the package with the GC3, you're going to have to spend $7.99 a year. And this is the gold package. And that's also going to give you things like spin, tilt, axis, backspin, side spin, club path, angle of attack, and then basically everything that you get through FXX 2020 and FSX Pro. So, over time, as you start to basically add the cost of the subscriptions up every year with the Bushnell Launch Pro, and you start adding $7.99 a year, it's not going to take too long before you get to the difference in that price. Well, the problem with the Bushnell Launch Pro is that you're going to continue to have to spend this subscription every year, whereas with the GC3, you don't have to do that at all. So that's something to keep in mind. So it's basically, again, money now versus money later. Now, if you feel like maybe in two or three years you're gonna to wanna to upgrade to something else, you may consider the Bushnell Launch Pro. But if you're someone who wants to have access to all the features, and this is something that you're going to hold on to for quite a while, which is, I'm assuming if you're spending that kind of money, you're gonna to wanna to hold on to it, then I think the GC3 would be the better option for you. Also, if you're someone who doesn't need golf simulation, I think the Bushnell Launch Pro is plenty. But if you're someone who wants to play actual courses and including the ability to even play online or do different things like that, I still feel that the GC3 would be the better option for you at home. So I just wanted to kind of share that with you. I'm gonna dive back into this uh, product now and show you some of the features on the GC3. But I did want to explain to you the difference between the Bushnell Launch Pro and the GC3 for you at home. So after looking at the computer, I hope I helped answer some of your questions in regards to what the difference is between the Foresight GC3 that we have here and the Bushnell Launch Pro. But to summarize it a little bit more, again, if you're someone who's looking for golf simulation, I still feel the GC3 probably is your best bet because you're gonna get everything you need directly in the package. But if you do a little bit of math, let's say that you're just someone who needs a few courses, you wanna have 3D ball flight, you wanna have everything at your disposal, but you don't need 20 courses, you're okay with four or five, you're okay with having friends over instead of you playing online. Well, now you're looking at a subscription cost of $3.99 a year, plus the additional cost of the Bushnell Launch Pro, which is gonna be around 3,000. And if we look at the math there, it would take you about 10 years at $3.99 a year to then add up to the $7,000 price point of the GC3. In that kind of situation, that makes a little bit of sense for you to consider that. Now, if you're someone who wants everything that comes in the package of the GC3, but you want to start with the lower price of the Bushnell Launch Pro at $3,000, well, at, if you want all those features, it's going to cost you $7.99 a year. Now, the $7.99 a year will add up quickly to get you to that $7,000 price point. So it basically would take you between four and five years to hit that $7,000 price point. 
So again, if it's something you plan on holding onto for longer than that, you're probably better off with going with the GC3 uh, in regards to that because once you hit that fourth or fifth year and you've been paying $7.99 a, a year for that, then you're going to continue to still have to pay that in order to keep those features on the Bushnell Launch Pro. Whereas if you had just bought it from the beginning with the GC3, you're getting everything that comes in the box. So that's something to keep in mind. So again, if it's something a little bit cheaper at that 399 price point, it makes some sense to possibly consider it. But if you're doing the full package, you want access to everything straight out of the box, which is 3D ball flight, online play, multiple courses, I still feel the GC3 is the way to go. I hope that helps to answer a lot of that. Any questions you have, reach out to me at Roland at MyGarageGolf.com. I'm here to answer any of those questions that you may have, and we'll walk you through it step by step to make sure that you make the right decision at home. All right, so I got my GC3 down on the ground, but I need to set it up. I'm gonna plug it in. I'm gonna plug it into my PC as well, and we'll get started with showing you some of the features here with this awesome product. All right, so we have our device down on the floor now. We have it plugged into a power, basically a power surge, as well as to the computer. Uh, we have the FXX software and the FSX Play software already set up on that computer. So we're pretty much ready to go. But we're going to go back to that alignment stick that came with the device. And I want to show you a little bit how to do this really quickly. So automatically, when you put a device down, the alignment is going to be parallel to your device. So it's pretty much going to be set up the way you want it. But let's say you have a situation where you're hitting, you don't necessarily hit straight into your screen. You hit at an angle one way or another. This is where the alignment stick can come in. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna place the alignment stick down on your mat directly where your hitting area is gonna be. So me, here, it's gonna be right in front of where I'm hitting. But if you had a different setup, you'd place it directly into where you're hitting for your setup. So we're gonna place that down here on the ground. Now I'm gonna put it closer to the right side of my actual hitting mat here. Uh, and the reason why is if you see down here on the floor, with my new setup, I have an auto tee. So I'm trying to find a way to have it read the ball on the tee as well as on the mat. Now it's a kind of a smaller window than I thought it may be, uh, it just depends upon the device, but we're looking maybe about 10 inches or so is what I'm, I'm kind of seeing total width wise where you can put the ball. So I'm gonna have to move the actual device further away to read the ball on the tee and actually still have it read the ball on my mat. I'm gonna have to be probably on this half of my mat to put the ball down and that's fine, it'll work just fine. But what we wanna do now is we wanna align this device. So we have it where we want it, we have it set up where we want it, where it reads it in both spots. Now I wanna show you, I'm gonna record it here on my phone for you and show you how you wanna set that alignment up at home as well. Okay, so here we have my alignment rod down here on the ground. And again, as you see, it's gonna point straight to my screen here. So there's the alignment rod, there's the device. And let's zoom in on the device I can show you now. See, we can get this on camera, guys. Okay, there we go. That's what you're gonna see on the screen, which is gonna be, it's gonna be a rotating screen, shows you different things, angle of attack, sorry if it, for the uh, flashing, total spin, spin axis, launch angle, speed, path, efficiency, angle of attack. So this is what you would get with like, say the Bushnell Launch Pro if you didn't wanna have any software that goes with it. But I'm gonna show you how to align it now. So we're ready to go. So I can get it zoomed in again. Okay, so now I'm gonna basically touch the screen, pull up settings, and there in the middle, you're gonna see target alignment. So I'm gonna hit that target alignment button, and now it's automatically going to align. And there you see it flashing. So now it's aligned itself with my alignment rod here. And I'm gonna do it one more time where I'm not standing in the way just to make sure. But it's gonna align it with my alignment rod here what you're seeing with my device here, and we're gonna be good to go to start hitting some shots. All right, so now at this point, we've already unboxed the GC3, we've already set it up, we've plugged it into the power outlet, we've plugged it into our computer, we already had the FSX 2020 and the FSX Play software downloaded on the computer. Uh, and pretty much we're ready to go. Now I was able to download six courses total. Uh, there's seven actually downloadable courses for the FSX Play. One of them is La Joya Pines, which I don't have access to right now just because I don't have all the login info since this was sent on loaner. Um, but I also only have, I believe, 
three or four that have been downloaded for FSX 2020. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of everything. Now, I'm probably gonna break this video up into a series of shorter videos. So those of you watching at home, uh, you're gonna be able to kind of get a better and quicker access to the things that you're looking for. So I'm gonna finish off this video um, showing you the driving range on the FSX Play, which is one of the options where you can play and actually, actually play at Paris, which is pretty cool. So I'll show you that. We're gonna break it down into different categories, which you'll see in future videos. I think it's gonna help make it a little easier instead of having one long video that's about an hour long, we'll have a bunch of shorter videos that you'll be able to check out. So let us know if you have any questions on any of that. One thing we have not done, and I did have someone, uh, and I'm gonna actually put the link for this uh, company because I was actually saved by them. They sent me some stickers a while back that happened to work with the GC3, as you see on the club face here, and as you see on the driver face here. It's one dot, and all you're gonna do is you're going to put it basically center of your club face towards the top part of your iron, as you see here. Get my hand out of the way. And then for the driver, exact same thing. You're going to put it center of the driver and on the top of the club face, as you see here. And that's going to allow the unit to read your club data. So we've already lined that up as well. We have all the club data that we're gonna be needing um, on the GC3, which I'll show you here in future videos also. But before we finish this video, what I wanna show you is the Paris driving range on the FSX Play. It's one of the options that we have. Now, under FSX Play, we have the courses option. We have the option um, to play some games. And we have uh, basically the, the driving range option as well, the practice option. So this is gonna be where you can actually pick any of the courses and pick different spots where you can hit shots from, or you can have like a driving range. Now on the FSX 2020, you're gonna see the actual driving range. So what I'm gonna do on, before we finish this video is I'm gonna show you a quick video of us showing you the driving range on FSX Play, which is right now Paris. And then we'll show you as well on FSX 2020, the actual foresight driving range that you may have seen before. So let's get started with that. Now on the screen that you see here up on the screen, we have three options, courses, practice, and games. And again, this is going to be the FSX Play software. This is the more upgraded graphics version. So I'm gonna take this to practice first and show that to you. And again, here is the Paris course. Now, if you go through all the options, you're gonna see that there is no actual driving range course. You can basically pick any of the six courses that we have downloaded. One of them is, includes the Paris driving range. And so for now, I'm gonna show you the Paris driving range. I'm gonna show you that here on video. All right, so welcome to Paris. And as you see behind me, we see the Eiffel Tower. Along the bottom, we're gonna have all the data in regards to ball speed, launch angle, side spin, side angle, back spin, carry, total distance. On the upper right hand corner, you have additional customizable features, analysis, conditions, flag, green, and grid. You can change those. There's multiple options there as well. Uh, but you kind of pick the ones that are most favorable for you and what you're looking to do. So I, all my other clubs have stickers on them from different products. So we reviewed these a while back. These are the King uh, irons from Cobra. And um, these are gonna be one of the most difficult set of irons for me to hit because they're very thin. This is a seven iron. Uh, but I wanted to show you all the club data. So bear with me on any bad shots. And again, the club stickers that were sent to me, I'm gonna put the website down below. Make sure you check out their website. Really, really cool website. Um, and everything that they do is for a really, really good cost. So check, check them out. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on any of the stickers. Now, if you have anything like um, a Foresight GC3, Unicore, um, even Skytrack for certain things, um, and also even the Flightscope Mevo, they do stickers for all of those. So I'm gonna put that down below just because they were kind enough to send it to me and allow me to have some club data here uh, for this video. So let's take some shots now on this driving range. So as soon as I put my ball down, you're gonna see it registered as being in the zone. Now, it's a 10 by seven zone for the GC3, just so you're aware. It's not a huge zone. So I had to kind of move it where it would be able to pick up the T that you see here, the auto T as well as this portion of my hitting mat, which is kind of cut in half. So that's one flaw, I guess you can say necessarily, is a little bit smaller. The GC Quad has a little bit bigger uh, range that it would pick up more stuff. But for its purpose and what you're looking for, I mean, it still does the job. As long as you're where you hit your drivers from or within about six, seven inches from where you hit your irons from, you should be okay in that scenario. Kind of like what you see here with me. I also like that it's further away from you for people that you know, maybe have people that aren't, haven't played a lot of golf, 
uh, or even people like me every now and then I have a shank that I'll hit in here. You know, you can't say that word, but it's the case. So it's kind of further away. It's not right in the zone, like right in the, the uh, bad area in case you hit a bad shot or a poor shot. It's a little bit further away. It gives it a little bit more protection. So let's hit a seven iron and see how we do here. Very short seven iron, 122 yards. But you're gonna see on the screen now, once we put a ball in the zone, you'll see all the info from that last shot. So 87.5 ball speed, 22.1 launch angle, 22 left side spin, 0 0.1 left side angle, 4,049 backspin, 115 carry, 121. Pretty, pretty much a horrible shot, uh, but it gives you all the data there. Let me show you one other thing as well here. All right, so I didn't show you the first one because it was really, really bad shank, but the second one you're gonna see at the bottom. So it's gonna go from top to bottom now. Um, we got 87.5 ball speed at the launch angle. You're gonna have backspin, side spin. This is all your club, all your ball data actually. Uh, total carry, total distance. Now, go into club data. You can click that here. And here's where we're going to have some of the other information. So we have club speed of 76.3, angle of attack 1.3 degrees, and the club path, which is 0 0.8 degrees. Uh, it doesn't show face to path, lie or loft, or the closure rate or anything on that. Some of that stuff is geared more for the GC quad or the Hawk. Uh, but in this case, this is what you get for the club data. Okay, so here we are now, if I wanna move it closer, let's say I wanna be here in the middle, for example, I can place it kind of wherever I want. Now I'm 300 yards away, and if I hit drop, I can drop it. So I can pretty much place it wherever I want to in regards to the location, that's pretty cool. Now you could also do other things. If you wanted to check out, say, a flyby, it's gonna show you a cool flyby of the actual in this case, the driving range that you're going to be hitting at, which is nice. So this kind of gives you a really cool idea as far as what you're looking at. And there's the green down there. If you want to see a replay of your last shot, you can click that. Click the play button. And there's a replay, kind of a follow view of the last shot that I hit there. That's a cool feature as well. You can go back to any one of your shots and also get the data from those shots also. So here's what we're going to do. Because I'm hitting a seven iron, I'm going to go ahead and relocate one more time. And I'm going to put it within that 150 range because that's about where I would hit a seven iron typically. And we'll put it right about 150-ish. And I'm going to go ahead and hit on drop. And now we should be 150 to that, to the green. Now if I also want to go and go to the green, and let's say I want to have the grid on or off, you can select that as well. So that should be an option. If I want to see where the flag is, I could push this button right here, which is the flag button. And there you see the flag straight in front of me. And then push it again and it goes away. So it just kind of shows you where you're at. But you do have a, a map up here that you can see at any point to kind of give you an idea of where you're aiming. Let's hit a couple more shots. All right, so we're 150 away. Let's see if we hit a couple seven iron shots onto the green now. Well, it's on the green, not the way I want it to be. And it's probably gonna be off the green. That's pretty cool. We're on the green there. And you do see the grid that we turned on for the green as well. So hit it. I don't know why you need to have another ball in the zone for it to show you the numbers. That's one thing that I'd like to just see the numbers without having to put another ball in the zone. But I do, uh, I do like being able to see the numbers, not on that shot. Let's hit another one, see if I can get one up in the air here. A little bit better strike, a little left though. Okay, carried that one 140-ish. Nice true rollout on this, I like that. And you would be able to see if you actually make a hole in one, which would be nice.
Now let's hit one more and see how we do. Really bad shot again, but I'll take it. It's on the green. Distance is at least dialed in, no matter how poor the strike is. Okay, so again, not showing me the data until a ball is in the zone. I think with a software update, that could probably be fixed, but I don't necessarily like that um, too, too much. Obviously, I don't see why you have to have a ball in the zone to get data from your last shot. The other thing I don't love is the big Foresight Sports logo at the top. I see why it's there, but when you have the first view, and even when you're playing golf, which I'll show you in another video, it's covering the distance for the yards. So now that the ball's in the zone, you see the distance 150 here, but normally it's up here when you first start and the ball's not in the zone. This gets covered by the Foresight Sports logo. So just nitpicky stuff, obviously, but stuff that obviously can be fixed on a software upgrade later on um, with FSX Play. Just something that I think uh, needs to kind of be adjusted down the road. Now just to kind of clean up the screen, you can get rid of that by clicking this button here. That'll pop up all the additional items and it will take that away. Can't do anything about that. You click on that and that still stays there. Um, the information on the bottom of the screen, you can click um, that as well and pull it up. So here you're gonna see ball data is on the top, club data is on the bottom. So again, with the club data, we're getting the club speed, angle of attack, and that's all we got on that one. And then for the flight data, we have carry and total distance. So we got club data and angle of attack in regards to the actual club data with the sticker on this particular shot. You can adjust your club down here, bottom left, seven iron, six iron, whatever you're actually hitting, that'll keep track of that. And then again, if you go up here and you go to your analysis screen, it will track everything that you're doing in regards to your club data and the ball data for each shot that you've hit. Um, it does not say the club on here, I don't believe. It'd be nice to have that saved as well. Um, so another something that I would maybe put on a wish list of things to see later. Uh, so that way if you switch between clubs, it'll, it'll adjust that as well for you. But it is nice to be able to go back and look at all of your data there also. All right, so what we've just seen is the actual driving range or practice mode for FSX Play. Before we end this video, I also wanna show you FSX 2020. Again, it does come with both packages and each one has its own little feature. So you, as you've probably seen before, the True Foresight uh, Sports driving range, I'm gonna show you that next just to kind of give you an idea on what that looks like and how the screen is laid out on the FSX 2020, as well as look at a difference in regards to how the graphics would look as well. So I'm gonna show you that before we end today's video. All right, so here we're gonna open up FSX 2020. I'm gonna show you a little bit about how that program will look as well. Okay, now you may have seen this before, obviously. Um, we have a very standard driving range course. Uh, here's a foresight range. Here we got a map here as far as what we're looking at. And all together from where you're hitting to where the green is is about 375 yards. So we have a lot of cool features here at the top. Like what club are we using? We're gonna use an iron, hit okay. We're using a seven iron again for this. What kind of ball am I using? I'm using actually premium AVX golf balls. You can actually add a ball as well, which is nice. This is the trajectory view, which could be the ball, chase, random, the tracking view, which is exact TV style random. So we're gonna leave it as the basic default for now. This is the bird's eye view. It'll show you the driving range from a bird's eye view as well. So there's a lot more options on this one, which is kind of cool. The flag. And I mean, even though the graphics on FSX Play are supposed to be better, I mean, I don't, I don't see a major difference on this one. I, I really kind of like this driving range a little bit better. There's another view. That's kind of cool, I like that. Shows you your golf bag and your, your balls and everything that you're looking at there, as well as how far you're hitting to the green. Also shows you when a ball lands on the green, if it's flat or if it rolls, which is nice. 
trajectories and different things. So let's click up here in the upper right hand corner. See shortcuts. Those are all the pictures, what they mean. Test screen speed, pin placement, all that. Settings, we want it windowed or full screen. Graphics quality, we have those full graphics on here. Shows the kind of graphics card, everything that we have on the computer. And then any other devices that you may have connected. Now, I want to set it up again for that seven iron. So I'm going to go ahead and it has distances on here. So I got 150 again right here. I'll select that. And there you see the actual green. So let's take a couple shots with this one and see how we do. On the upper right hand corner it says hold DR. That stands for driving range, obviously. So let's take a shot and I want to see if we can get it on the green. No matter how it gets on the green, we'll see. Cool ball view, I like that. All right, so we're on the green there. Definitely a more zoomed in view than we see with FSX Play. And there's all my information there on the screen. So on the upper left hand corner, we have ball speed and club speed, launch angle, efficiency, push and pull, angle of attack, backspin and club path. We have the carry distance, we have the total distance, and we have the offline of 5.2 yards left, and I was 24 feet to the target. So it's not giving me face to target, loft, lie, horizontal, or vertical impact. It does give me club uh, efficiency, it gave me my club path, and it gave me angle of attack. So first and foremost, I like that everything's on one screen here. Um, I do like that everything's set up on one screen. The other thing that we didn't have to do let's put the ball in the target zone in order for it to give us that data. So I like that a lot. That's a pretty cool feature. Graphics wise, um, it was a more zoomed in view. I kind of like the, the view of FXX, FSX play a little bit better. Um, but I, that's also something you can adjust. So we'll check out a couple of different camera views as well. And that gives us a good idea. But overall, pretty cool. I like the driving range here a little bit better than I do on FSX play. And again, I don't know for sure if you can get this driving range on FSX Play or if that's coming out in the future, but for now, all they had is a Paris option when I was going through that. Let's take another shot. Way left. Really bad. We won't even worry about the numbers on that one. Okay, better strike there. Get down. Ooh, too long. These irons are pretty hard to hit, by the way. But I'm pretty, pretty impressed that I hit it that well. And it wasn't a skull, I actually hit it pretty flush. Okay, so again, we got a quick screen that pulls up. Maybe you can adjust that to have it stay up a little bit longer. That's something I would like to do. And again, all the numbers on the side, 106, 80 club speed, efficiency, angle of attack, even club path on this one. So tracking club data is tracking ball data. I really like that. Um, let's check on a couple different camera views for you and see what else we can look at as well there. So let's try, um, this is our ball camera position. I think I want to leave that where it is, but let's try the catch up. I had it on exact, but let's try catch up now for trekking and let's hit OK. I have no issues with the graphics or the quality of the way this looks on this driving range. And to me, I've always felt that Foresight had one of the best driving ranges out there as far as um, fun, as far as total appeal, as far as numbers that you're getting from anything, whether it be the GC2 all the way to the GC Hawk or anywhere in between for that matter. Everything's left. Look very similar camera view. I didn't really notice much of a difference there. 166. Okay, I like that. Hey, too hard now though. It's a very similar view, but it's a cool view. I like it. 
I want to see that screen right there last longer than how quickly it's lasting. So let's see if we can adjust that or not. Shot data. This is flight. I'm going to put that at 10 now. Try that. We'll click apply. And for camera, I'm just going to put it at random. Let's see if it changes it now. Uh, I always had this as ball, so maybe that's why it didn't change. I'm going to put TV style as tracking, random as camera position. Let's click OK. And I also changed the after shot thing to 10 seconds. So we will see if that fixes that problem for us. Okay. Hit that off the toe a bit. Should hopefully get there though. Okay. Still not really changing the camera. Um, not really quite too, sh too sure on how to change that then. I'll, work, I'll look into that and get back with you guys on that one. But I did change this. It should last for 10 seconds now. You see all the data there on the screen and it's going to last a little bit longer now so you can check all the data that you need. So I was able to get that part fixed as far as the camera view. Haven't figured that one out yet. So I'll work on that one and get back to you guys on that. Let's take one last shot here. There's a different camera view. All right, so it was random. I must have picked the same one. Very cool how it zooms into the ball. I have no idea where it landed though, so I don't necessarily like that view. And all the data. So 99 speed, 102.1, pretty much all the data. There's my averages on the bottom and my last shot on the top. And now I see where my ball landed. So I like the follow view just fine. I don't really need to change it to be honest. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that back and leave it the way it was. Uh, random kind of makes it a little weird because I didn't even know where that shot went until after my shot was done. So I'll probably fix that on a future setting. But overall, driving range, uh, the foresight range, I'm a big fan of it. Let me know your thoughts. Um, and it's, it's kind of weird comparing the Eiffel Tower to an actual true driving range. But you know, between the two and the settings and all the data that pops up on the screen and all the adjustability, I really do like the foresight range a little bit better, but let me know your thoughts at home as well. I'd love to hear what you have to say about that also. All right, I wanna thank you for hanging out with me throughout this video. And again, in this particular case, since there's so much I have to go through, I think it's better to break this down into sessions. So I'm gonna have a whole series about the Foresight GC3 and also using it with the FSX 2020 and FSX Play. And in any circumstance where I can, I'm gonna compare the two between FSX Play and FSX 2020 like we did today to get your thoughts on it. Now again, the cool thing is you get both. So there's no having to choose one or the other. You're gonna get both with the package, which I like. A big shout out again uh, to the Indoor Golf Shop for sending me the GC3 to review. Um, this is you know, it's definitely something I really, really appreciate, um, but we're able to give our honest opinions on the device. And so far I've been really, really impressed. Something I wanted to test out. Um, so I really want to thank them again. Make sure to check our video links uh, in the description below for if you're curious into buying your own uh, GC3. I'm gonna have some links there. They are affiliate links. If you use them, it does help out our channel. Uh, so I really appreciate that. But again, for all of our reviews, for everything that we do here, we're always allowed to give honest and positive feedback to you, our viewers, and let you know what we like, what we don't like, things that we'd like to get fixed. And as you see here, um, I did some of that today. So there's some things that I really love about it. And there's some things that I don't like as much. Um, some of the negatives would be the range and how big of an area you have to put the ball down. I'd like to see that a little bit bigger, but it's not a deal breaker. It still works for my setup here. Um, with the FXX Play, there's a little few things here and there that I'd like to change as you saw in the video. So I'm gonna continue to give you my feedback, let you know. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me, Roland at mygaragegolf.com. Again, make sure to check out our website for any of our links and check our video description if you're curious on more information on the GC3. So hope you like this video. We're looking forward to doing a lot more in this series of videos for you at home. But until the next time, as always, keep on golfing. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much.